Okay, welcome to the giant pile of weirdness. Oh, thank you for the, the sub, Luna. <sighs> Unfortunately, the news itself is rather terrible. I guess before we get into that, one, it's really fucking cool that you've had seven months, and two, I do get to show off. My partner got me a shirt of a raccoon with a baseball bat <laughs> saying, talk trash, get bash, which just, oh god, <laughs> you see me. <laughs> and I had to show that off. I have been doing and organizing security actions at drag shows for months because we've seen this coming. We're currently, we're reaching out basically to every show that exists now. We had people protesting with ARs and plate carriers. Audio's kind of quiet. I'll try and turn this up a little. We had people protesting with ARs and plate carriers. Like, we've had people for a while now that are showing up to events with children, events that are aimed at children with fucking guns and armor and are screaming about, like, people being evil. And I think our community has recognized for a long time, police response time to the shooter was 20 minutes. Two people inside the club, two fucking heroes, tackled this guy, took his gun, took one of his guns, and disarmed him. The, the, the valiance involved both in that and in the people who died trying to save other people's lives cannot be overlooked. Which I guess brings us to the first article. Unfortunately, tonight's going to be the kind of night where we don't have a lot of different news stories. We're going to end up really focusing heavily on this one. Queer community in deep mourning after Colorado Springs shooting. At least five people were killed and dozens more were injured. The attack at a bar in Colorado Springs, Colorado over the weekend has left the local queer community grieving. At least five people were killed and dozens were injured in a late night shooting on November 19th, eve of Transgender Day of Remembrance, which honors the memory of the lives of trans people who were the victims of discriminatory violence. The targeted bar, Club Q, was hosting its weekly drag show, according to the website. Club Q is in shock and in deep mourning with the family and friends who had loved ones senselessly taken from them. The club said in a statement sent to the ABC News. We condemn the horrific violence that shattered an evening of celebration for all in the queer community of Colorado Springs and our allies. Yeah, um, I think at least part of that is, uh, this shit's hitting me. I'll try and talk as loud as I can. I'm not gonna lie, this shit is hitting me really hard. You're talking about, this is a club. Like, on the one hand, I get it. People should be armed, should be armed and ready for violence. But like, There were two people who worked quickly, who fought and pushed to the target to stop the fight. Fucking sucks that this is where we are, but it is where we are, and it's what we need to be doing. Sorry, we're at the point where there is no more pretending like it's just rhetoric. I, at this point, I don't even care if it's just a few people. And I don't want to hear anybody saying that this is why we need gun control, because that, that's going to leave us vulnerable. The, we, we live in an age where you can just print an AR. We need, the, we need to have people like, I, I don't know who the fuck is saying that we should be, or why the fuck anybody could turn this into uh, a, a, a statement for gun control, which is 100% the, the reason why Biden can go fuck himself. Both because he openly goes on national TV and says there isn't a specific, uh, you know what, I'm going to that article. Biden has come out trying to tie this attack to a need for an assault weapons ban, which, first of all, would not have prevented the gun that existed from being used. Biden is openly trying to turn this into uh, a question of how to, to push the assault weapons ban. He turned it straight into, like, trying to talk about this as an assault weapons ban issue. That wouldn't have solved this. Now that we know that we have, like, this specific need, you're going to make our ability to fight back that much harder. The police didn't solve this, and they're not going to solve this. Their training specifically tells them not to in some cases. Police, the, the number of officers I have talked to who say their number one job is getting home alive, I, 
I, there's no compatible world where that can be your number one job, but also you're the only person who is allowed to respond to lethal threats. That can't be how any of this works. And the fact that people want to push this idea that we just trust the people who openly go out of their way to say, not only... Go. Copy. Actually, yeah. Okay, yeah, keep filming, keep filming. disarm and pretend like that means that the people who hate us don't have guns anymore. That's wrong on so many levels. If you give me $300 right now, I can go make a gun. No registered parts, no controllable interests, no way to stop that. That's just 3D printing and basic hand tools. You cannot expect anybody to disarm while we're facing open genocide. Open fucking genocide. No, there's no question about it. There's no arguments about it. There's no, this is the definition. They are, it, it's not, all of that stochastic terrorism, all of the, the, the pushing of queer people as being groomers and pedophiles and terrible because they're supporting queer children existing and trying to reduce the queer suicide rates. There's no argument about what that's leading to. There's no vagary here anymore. They want us dead. They openly fucking want us dead. Libs of TikTok, one of the pages that has been openly coordinating attacks on queer organizations, has taken the fucking mask off the past couple of days. I am never going to tell anybody to interact with them as an actual account, but I am going to open them quickly because it's, it's legitimately disgusting. Um, this literally happened because of the shit that they're spreading, and they're still saying, like, they're referring to trans kids as fucking castration, like, Jesus fucking Christ, that's not at all what that is, and obviously it's just, they've taken the mask off. This, there is no longer a question that they are targeting people specifically for hate. Um, like... Straight up specifically targeting people who just happened to be trans and worked at Twitter. They've taken, they, there is no longer a, we have to pretend like this is about, only about children. Even with the horrifying fucking organizing against fucking hospitals, the bullshit line they've always been able to feed people is, oh, we just care about children. The mask is fucking off. Like, literally the only thing they're doing is targeting hate at people who their crime is being trans and existing on Twitter. Somebody came with a gun into a club and murdered people. And their response is still, we don't care, it's your fault. Their response is to lean in to their rhetoric and say, well, if you hadn't been, insert lie here, you would be fine. The first time they got kicked off was because they were targeting bomb threats at a children's hospital. Like, Batman villain levels of evil. The, the kind of thing that you would put into a comic or a cartoon so that even a child who couldn't understand most complicated concepts would know you don't bomb the children's hospital. He is now interacting with them casually. I would also like to point out that everybody who at the time, there was a, a, a big push by some people on the right to try and rewrite Pulse as that was actually a, 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 an attack on uh, America overall by somebody who was specifically uh, a hardcore uh, Islamic believer. Um, and it actually had nothing to do with queerness and then used as evidence the 
wife who was stuck in the same religion slash universe that birthed her husband claiming he wasn't gay. We're all arguing like to this date about whether or not that was a, a hate crime on queer people. And like, Jesus fucking Christ. There is, there is a conceited attempt to manipulate the truth around shit like this. Which is why, unfortunately, if we, if we followed the strict Israeli model, we wouldn't bring this up. We would try and move on. We would try and skip past it so that we don't fuel it. And specifically, we wouldn't talk about the person who did it. I've slowly come to the realization that at least part of why, um, part of the reason why, why Israel does that is because they don't want people thinking about the root cause of any of the problems. They skip past discussion entirely because they don't want discussion. So on the one hand, I don't think conversation is inherently bad. I think you need to talk about who is, you need to know your enemy. You need to talk about who is coming after you. You need to be thinking about it and listening to it in a contextualized manner, don't get me wrong. You shouldn't be listening to anything that deifies them. It needs to be clear condemnation and anything that like sneaks into, oh, they were just confused. You turn that shit off. But we need to have these conversations. This can't become they attacked Muraka. They came for us. They came for queer people. Somebody wanted to burn the fucking rainbow. This wasn't about burning the American flag. So with that context in mind, and with that very heavy understanding, let's discuss this asshole. Let's talk about where this hate is coming from. Let's learn about our enemy. What we know about Anderson Lee Aldrich, the alleged Colorado Springs Club Q shooter. Police say Aldrich, 22, is in custody and being treated for injuries. An attacker opened fire in a gay nightclub in Colorado Springs late Saturday, killing five people and wounding 18, officials said. The club said the suspect was subdued by patrons, and Colorado Springs police said he was taken into custody and hospitalized for treatment for his, of his... I want to pause there for a second. Because again, this cannot be called out enough. The fucking heroes who subdued an armed gunman with his own fucking guns. That is impressive. Here's what we know about the suspect. Who is Anderson Lee Aldrich? Colorado Springs Police Chief Adrian Vasquez identified the target as 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich at a news conference Sunday morning. Investigators recovered two guns on scene and said Aldrich used a long gun during the shooting, Vasquez says. Aldrich remains in hospital. Law enforcement officials said Aldrich's, quote, interactions with law enforcement are part of the broader investigation, so they did not say if he'd been previously contacted by police. A man with the same name and matching age was arrested June 2021 for threatening his mother with a homemade bomb, multiple weapons, and ammunition, according to media reports at the time. That man was arrested after a brief standoff. The June 2021 incident played out at Leslie Bowman's home in the Lorson Ranch neighborhood on the outskirts of Colorado Springs. Bowman rented a room at her house to Aldrich's mother for about 15 months leading up to the alleged bomb threat. Andy, as Bowman knew Aldrich, would visit his mom's house, usually spending time watching movies in her room. He wasn't talkative, which Bowman thought was fairly typical of young men of that age. There was one episode where Aldrich was aggressive towards her, Bowman said. His mother had been complaining about the toilet in her bathroom not working, but it was late and Bowman wanted to address it the next day. Aldrich lashed out. He just kind of in my face and said, get out, and slammed the door in my face, Bowman recalled. Then on June 18th, while Bowman was out babysitting a friend's kids, she got some strange texts from Aldrich's mother asking when she might be home. Eventually, she told Bowman not to come home because some people were looking for Andy. Bowman called police and found out her home was at the center of an alleged bomb threat evacuation order and police standoff. Aldrich eventually surrendered and was arrested. Bowman returned to the house that, the next day and packed up, packed up his mother's things. Some men from Aldrich's mother's church retrieved them a day later. Bowman never saw or spoke to, her, spoke to her former tenant again. It wasn't until last month that Bowman was thought to look into what happened following Aldrich's arrest. El Paso County Sheriff's deputies knocked on her door looking for his mother. Bowman pieced together that it may have been a welfare check. That led Bowman to search the internet for updates on Aldrich's case. She learned the charges had been dropped. The police, investigators, the DA, no one contacted me the weekend after. I hope his mother is okay. I'm sure we'll find out soon. The reason I opened the other article, imagine the amount of the number of police, the number of pissed off police you're going to have after a bomb threat. 
you need to see a charge file. Imagine like asshole entitled police that believe because they were working a bomb scene, they deserve uh, you know, to make sure that the person who planted the threat got a charge. Screw justice, which I'm sure at least one of those self-entitled pricks must have also been thinking about, but all of them were thinking, this happened to me and I want justice. Then piece together the fact that all of those, the police, the probable multiple lieutenants, maybe even a captain who were involved in such a giant case as something as a bomb in a small town. Imagine the, like, this also included a police standoff. Then imagine the police don't file charges. And the prosecutor who's been assigned to the case doesn't think there's charges merited. How many situations can you see that making sense outside of a movie? His family member's an alder. His family member is like a Republican who's been pushing both the the big lie January 6th bullshit and a bunch of the hateful anti-trans, anti-queer, oh, they're actually fucking pedophiles bullshit nonsense who managed to get their child off of a fucking bomb plot. Bomba was under the impression his family was getting ready to leave Colorado back in 2021. Aldrich was living with his grandparents, who were in the process of selling their home in Lorson Ranch to re relocate to Florida. Aldrich and his mother were supposed to join them before his arrest. As of Sunday morning, officials declined to answer questions about the suspect's motives for the shooting, citing the ongoing investigation, which is one of those, one of the most infuriating parts of this. But at bare minimum, I can at least like vaguely understand, if you're going to have an investigation, you have to treat it neutrally. But like, at some point, you can say there is an abundance of evidence that would imply this. Like, you don't have to say that we don't have to say anything. Because it's... There's a reason why the, the hateful assholes still spreading violence are able to argue they're not. In a statement, Club Q termed the shooting a hate attack. Club Q is devastated by the senseless attack on our community, the club posted on its Facebook page. It said its prayers were with the victims and families, adding, we thanked the quick reaction of the heroic customers that subdued the gunmen and ended this hate attack. Glad the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation called the attack unspeakable. You can draw a straight line from the false and vile rhetoric about queer people spread by extremists amplified across social media to the nearly 300 anti-queer bills introduced this year to the dozens of attacks in our community like this one, Glad's president and CEO, Sarah Kate Ellis, said. That this mass shooting took place on the eve of Trans Day of Remembrance when we honor the memory of the trans people killed this year deepens the trauma and tragedy for all in the queer community. It's the, the idea that queer people are sexualizing uh, children. That is 100% fa the fascist playbook. That is an attempt to make queerness sexual and therefore bad. It's an attempt to make queerness something that you can regulate or easily... Bam. Um, the residents within a quarter mile block. Jesus. Think about all of the houses that were fucking evacuated over this asshole's bomb threat. And he still wasn't arrested. Her son was threatening to hurt her with a homemade bomb, multiple weapons, and ammunition. She was not in the home at the time when she made the call and was not sure where her son was. Like, imagine scaring people so much that a, your neighborhood is emptied out just in case and they still don't file a fucking charge. Negotiators were able to get Aldrich to comply with orders and he walked out of the front door of his home and was... He was arrested. He was fucking arrested. How is there no charges? Like, there are tweets from when they fucking unlifted the ban from when the bomb scare was no longer a threat to this fucking neighborhood as a permanent record of their fuck-up. Jesus. Video obtained by CNN shows Aldrich surrendering by law enforcement last year after allegedly making a bomb threat. Footage from the ring door camera of the owner of the home shows Aldrich exiting the house with his hands up and barefoot and walking to sheriff's deputies. Sheriff's deputies res responded to a report by the man's mother. He was threatening to cause harm to her with a homemade bomb, multiple weapons, and ammunition. And he refused to comply with orders to surrender. And despite all of that, again, he manages to not get arrested. 
If they breach, I'm a fucking blow it to holy hell, Aldrich adds as he walks in and out of the bedroom. Jesus fucking Christ. I've got the fucking shitheads outside. Look at that. They've got a bead on me, Aldrich says on the video, pointing the camera at a window with blinds covering it. You see that right there? Fucking shitheads got their fucking rifles out. So go ahead and come in, boys. Let's fucking see it. Like... Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, grandson of a California lawmaker. Aldrich is the grandson of outgoing California Assemblyman Randy Vopel, according to social media reports and CNN interviews. Vopel, who has served as state lawmaker since 2016, lost his re-election bid earlier this month. He could not be reached for comment. It's unclear how much Vopel, the father of Aldrich's mother, interacted with his grandson. As a lawmaker... He attracted attention when he compared January 6th attacks to the Capitol, to the on the Capitol to the Revolutionary War. This is Lexington and Concord, first shots fired against tyranny. Tyranny will follow in the aftermath of the Biden swear-in on January 20th. Vopel later tried to walk back his comments by tweeting a statement which read in part, I do not condone or support the violence and lawlessness that took place on Wednesday, January 6th at our nation's capital. The loss of life, theft of government property, and blatant disregard for law and order is reprehensible and unnecessary. I I want to Google this motherfucker. You know what? What what was he saying before? Because all of this is just about the immediate is the immediate aftermath. I, I'm hoping. Sorry. AB 353 would have permitted employees to gain otherwise unlawful employment discrimination in order to grant preferential treatment to veterans. Although this bill seemed to stem from laudable intentions to help veterans secure stable employment, it created an exemption from claims of discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation, which could be used to get around California's existing civil rights laws and favor candidates for employment who did not identify as queer over job applicants who do. AB 353... Jesus! So... Like, he was straight up trying to get rid of, of, like, queer basic protections. Make sure you are reaching out to your friends, to your loved ones, to anybody in the community. Make sure you're supporting each other. Grieve. Take time to grieve. Don't listen to anybody who says they don't have time to grieve, or they don't have time to, to cry. Cry first, get it out of your system, then fight. We don't have the luxury of falling apart. They're coming for us. They're coming for us hard. They're no longer being subtle about it. That's going to be it for the news. Thank you all for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I know this was a heavy one, but we're going to get through this together. And I really appreciate everybody coming and Frankly, fucking helping me get through this. Stay dangerous. Keep each other safe. And remember, moral doesn't mean legal. And Stonewall was a fucking riot. Peace.